at their height um, in the late 19th, early 20th century. The hotels are attracting people not just from the northeastern part of the country, but all over the country, and fairly significant numbers from uh, Great Britain and Europe. The hotels, the, the grand hotels, basically were completely functional within themselves. You didn't have to leave them if you didn't want to. The grand hotels uh, in, the, in the heyday now were, let us, more, let us more accurately describe them as islands. They were islands of, of elegance, islands of good food and service and so on and so forth. Back in the, in the 1800s, they would stay for a month or three months. During the summer, the gentlemen would leave on a Sunday night or Monday morning and they'd get on the train and they'd go back to Boston or New York or Philadelphia and they would work. They might work for 10 days or a week or two weeks, and then they would come back up. And their, their wives and children would have stayed at the resort. In the days of when the rail was the way that you got here, they were all, of course, powered by coal, and coal is dirty. And so on the day that you arrived, you would probably be quite sooty from your ride on the train. And so you never came down the first night for dinner. You would always go in, get in the bath, clean up, scrub up, uh, the maid would unpack your clothes, and then you would come down the next morning for breakfast. But you would never, you would always have room service the first night. You notice in the piazzas of the hotels, including this one, that they're pretty wide. Well, back in those days, the chairs were out back against the wall, not out front by the railings, so that people could promenade. And that after, after each meal, the, uh, the guests would go change clothes and they'd come down and promenade around the piazza to uh, show off. And we have, I have a, an employee that still works for me here and she grew up in Jackson Village and she talks about the ladies of the Wentworth walking the loop in their furs and their pearls, you know, before dinner or after dinner. The employees were, were central to the excess because they knew their jobs and they knew their stuff. But just as important as the employees are the guests. And unless you have guests who are grand hotel conditioned, it isn't going to work. It isn't going to work to have a gentleman in a baseball cap try to come into the dining room. So guests have a certain level of performance that they have to produce as well as employees. It's very much a symbiotic theater is, is, is what it is. Where the owner of the hotel, or at least the manager, was on property all the time, in the public eye, greeting the guest, helping the guest. Um, they, the guest would have three meals a day at the hotel. They were constantly on the property and the owners and the managers were involved on a day-to-day -day basis with the guests. They knew who the guests were because they came year after year. We, we catered to their needs and their wants. People would come back and want the same room. I had people that even wanted the same uh, room with the same colored wallpaper. Um, I had people that uh, wanted beds and furniture moved around. I had people that were there to, uh, um, for quite a lengthy time that would sort of claim their own furniture, even, even so that housekeeping had to catalog the furniture that they had in their room, store it away until the next season. We wouldn't use it just so that these people could have their same, you know, the same ironing board. <laughs> <laughs> the same bed, the same bureau. In the summertime, if there was really a nice Sunday, the hotel was orchestra, which was made up of uh, band members from New York Philharmonic, uh, Philadelphia Orchestra, and the Boston Pops, and so forth. They would go out in three, three boats in the middle of Profile Lake and play a concert in the middle of the afternoon for afternoon tea. And it was known that what was called the look. And if you were a new guest and weren't properly dressed, not fancy, just appropriate, uh, you would get a look 
that sent you right back to your room to change. But I know that one time we um, declined to serve the governor of Rhode Island because he didn't until he put on a necktie. And, and George and Barbara Bush used to come there quite often for dinner because I think we can safely say without being political they would fit into a proper Grand Hotel profile. <laughs> Even breakfast menu was very, very elaborate. You could have steak. And one, I, I remember the Profile House one uh, had a trout pond. It's still there. And if you wanted fresh trout for breakfast, you could say to the maitre d', I, wanted, I want trout, and they would send a, a, a person down and catch the trip, catch a fish, bring it back, fillet it, and cook it for you for breakfast. I mean, it, that's how, how uh, elaborate they got. I would love to be able to uh, spend a week in 1900 <laughs> at one of the grand hotels.